Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. This is the Wix Online Meeting 241, August 11th. I can't believe it's already August, but it is. This meeting is recorded for those of you that aren't with us right here, right now, being broadcast to YouTube. You'll be able to watch it later on YouTube, plus all of our other 240 meetings are up there. Let's talk about what we're going to do today. Today, we are going to do triage, and then whatever time we have left after triage, we'll continue our Wix 4 issue review to make sure that the issues that are open in 4 are the issues that we should be working on, and then we'll take questions and comments uh, that people might have, things that people want to talk about, other business type things. Uh, we'll see how things go, because in triage, we have quite a few issues open, but maybe they'll go okay. All right, so if you're here, welcome, and start thinking about questions you might ask while we do the triage. Here we go. Bob, you ready? Triage? Sure. Sure. Triage. We have 10 open issues, which sounds terrifying, except that we opened most of them, all of them. At this point, they're open by all of us. And this is happening because we're actually getting far enough in the Wix tool set where we're starting to find the smaller bugs. At least I think they're smaller bugs. Um, plus some things reported by other people. All right, so let's go ahead and start at the top here with 6537. Suppressed downgrowth, downgrade failure should cause Wix stand BA to not plan or apply. Uh, Bob, uh, you brought this back? I did um, because I went to go implement it and it occurred to me that uh, by not planning, or sorry, by by essentially short circuiting the the build or the execution, um, we're relying on the default plan action, um, and generally your BAs, work standard BA works this way. Um, doesn't call plan until you've clicked the button that says go. Um, so we could short circuit everything, uh, but we'd only be able to rely on the default plan action. And that wasn't entirely comfortable with me. Uh, so I wanted to bring it back and chat about it. Um, as I commented at, toward the bottom, I like the idea that you run a, you know, uh, typically it's a it's some kind of a prerequisite redist. And if a later version is already installed, you just immediately succeed. But that means we're relying on the fact that you double clicked and the default action is install and we can short circuit at that point. Um, didn't quite sit well with me, so. Well, I think one problem is that some BAs might make you give a lot of information before they let you click install. Right, right. Yeah, I agree. I, again, I agree the behavior, you know, to immediately succeed is, you know, best from a user perspective. Although it'd be ideal if we could explain why it's immediately successful. Um, but again, with standard BA being, you know, a model at the very least, uh, doesn't even call plan until you click that go button. So, and if we leave it as a BA decision, then you know we can uh, we can make that decision after detect and not even rely on the current behavior, uh, which would require that you actually you know call plan. I mean, I think it'd be okay if the BA did that. Okay. Rob, opposing thoughts? No, I, I don't have thoughts. I don't have any strong opinions on this one. Okay. Um, okay. Well, so then, you know, 
I'll take a look for work standard BA after detect. If detect says it's going to be a downgrade, then uh, I start to look at the planned action because it could come from a command line switch. But that should be just fine. I will do that. I mean, alternatively, the prereq BAs are doing like a, a plan before showing UI. So you might be able to piggyback off that as well. So they're like, they're doing a plan based on the default action or whatever. Right, right, right. Or I guess the prereq BA is always installing. Yeah. So maybe that's a little oh. special. Yeah, yeah. Pre yeah, yeah, is very yeah. special. That won't really give us any more information than we already get out of detect. True. Yeah. Okay. I'll take a look. I'll I'll see what's uh, what's feasible. Cool. All right. On to the next one. Wix tool set DNC host generator runs twice during the compilation of WPFBA. This was a thing that I was very confused about in my world and turned out to be an SDK issue in the end, Sean. Is that a .NET SDK issue? I I mean it definitely happened when you upgraded the SDK, but I don't I didn't look into it. Other than making sure that the source generator itself is not the problem. Cool. So I don't know if they changed the targets to where it's doing things that shouldn't be, or somehow our project references from the Wix Prod is doing something. I never looked into where the root cause was. So that's why this issue is still open then? Yeah. Cool. So presume, I guess there's a workaround now in four? That is, what's it, clearly the build has been unblocked. Yeah, I took your workaround and put it in the targets for the new for the NuGet package, and I guess we'll see what happens. All right, cool. So where should this go then? I wasn't planning on picking it up. Does it need to get solved in preview or in Wix four? I don't know. I mean, it seems to be working now. Seventeen point three was released. I don't think the the build VMs have been updated yet. Uh, but I I was able to run a local build with the workaround in place, which tells me it's either unchanged in the SDK, which was updated for 17.3, uh, or, well, it's either fixed or the workaround is, you know, safe, which since it just removes duplicates, seems a safe bet. So should this be closed in? The only thing we do is try to discover if we could take the workaround out Which is a good thing. I'll take it at some point and, you know. Uh, Poke at it with a sharp stick to see if it comes back? Basically, I'll take the workaround out and see if local builds fail or not. Okay. Uh, including uh, 6845, including remote payloads in a package that assigned to a container causes cab creation to fail. John. Yeah, this is the comment I made on your pull request that there's a hole right now where in the linker it's if a payload was part of a package that was assigned to the container, then it's being changed to embedded even if the file is not available. So when that happens, when it goes to try to create the cab, it tries to look at the path for the file, which doesn't exist, and it's a null reference exception. 
just like the one that you saw when you implemented the remote payloads feature. How do you end up in a state where a package is assigned to a container that has remote payloads? I mean, how, can you author that? When you're authoring the container, you're just, you have a package group ref. And then uh, I see. there's nothing stopping that package from having remote payloads. Right. Is it all remote payloads or the package itself? I'm wondering if this, can you, can you get into a state where it's mixed? The yeah. package should be in the container, but it has remote payloads that cannot be. Yeah, it can be mixed. There's nothing special about the package's payload, primary okay. payload, whatever you want to call it. Cool. So something about payload groups being included in a container probably needs to be fixed in 4.0, right? Because otherwise people will get a crash. Yeah. Crashes are bad. Yep. Cool. Who wants it? I don't Ooh. want it. <laughs> OK. Well, I've got patching, so I'm not taking anything right now. I'm not taking new things right now. So I guess we'll have to let it sit out there in the, unless Bob, you want it, or Jacob or Zach want to try to drop in on it. Well, I guess if someone else picks it up, we might need to decide how we want it to work. Oh, OK. Yeah, I mean, if that's not obvious, yeah. Because V3 would just not have the payload in the container. Interesting. OK. Does that just work then? Because it's a remote payload and presumably it's downloaded? It, yeah, the resolution would download it. But mm, I don't know if that makes sense. Like if you if you wanted the package to be in the container, then presumably you wanted all the payloads in there. Well that's so that's why I asked about about the mixed state. Um it's mildly interesting. Could uh, I'm trying to picture a scenario where this would be useful. It could be with you know a carefully constructed exe packet. I, I'm, it's not going to work with an MSI because I don't think MSI will would let you have. No, you have to launch the whole MSI to be downloaded, so it would not work with, on MSI. With cabs. It, well, yeah, with okay. external cabs. Yeah. I, so so it it could work with a carefully constructed exe package that you know only needed a payload you know for an optional feature or like the .NET framework remote right like the web one uh, well it, it does, that's not how it works today but it could work that way well you can't really have an optional payload because if burn can't cache the whole package, then the whole package will fail. OK. OK, yep, yep. OK, so that would require, yeah, a new feature to make payloads optional. I mean, well, I would, then that just I seems would think like it should be an, an error. Yeah. OK, yeah. Eh, I'll take it. I'll take a stab at it. And make and so the the fix here is to make it an error case. Yes. Okay. Do, 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 do. All right. Wix XE convert ignores commented inner text. So yeah, this is another. I saw this go by in the Wix users mail list going. Oh, okay, that's cool. The 
there's another way of getting, was it C data or is it just any commented text? It's is any it, comments. Any comments in the text was tripping up the converter. Cool. And this doesn't fix it. This, this merge here doesn't fix it. It has a failing test. So it doesn't fix the inner text. It just adds a test. Yep. Okay. Well, that title is very misleading then. Yes. <laughs> I was like, oh, it's fixed then, but it's not. Okay. Uh, yeah, you need to take that in four. Um, no, so the, that pull request did fix a separate issue where if there was empty C data, then it wouldn't be converted at all. So I did fix a bug in that PR, and I added a failing test for this case as well. OK. Cool. Do you want to take okay. this one, so too? it's not quite as, as broken promise. Well, C no, data works, take this. but normal text doesn't. All right, cool. Well, probably should get fixed in four. Because people have you know, comments and things like that. odd that it doesn't work it's it's just the confusion uh, of the of the comment yeah. nodes yeah i'm sure it's you know because inner text are text nodes and you can have many of them and when you get in a whole white space i mean it's i can see it being involved and be like oh yeah here's the bug <laughs> be like, yeah okay i think when you get in there i'll be like oh i can see how this happens and when you say when you get in there uh, not me i've got patching <laughs> i'm just like no I'm picturing that as quite an excuse for a while, huh? Well, I, yeah, not on these outside issues here. Maybe later, but not now. All right, we'll leave it for, and if someone wants to pick it up, we will. I mean, these will show up again. I mean, we'll have to get it tackled eventually. So uh, I guess we'll sit out there for a bit. All right, cool. Um, bundle with... Out bootstrapper application fails with message from exception number 6852. Uh, yeah, so if you build without any bootstrapper application, a bundle, I think, yeah, we got a big crash. I think that's what this was. Uh, yes, bundle is missing that T data, right. And Bob said this is related to uh, another um, issue 6305, where I think if you have too many bootstrap applications, is that the other one? Yeah, we yeah. have multiple ones. So this is the other way, if you have none. So I will treat it as very likely the same fix. Probably. So will... Oh, you already had that one? Yeah. Bob already had 6305, so, all right, cool. Chances are you can get both issues with one fix, yes. All right, let's see. That was 6835. So 6853, Windows installer validation target runs even when core compile is up to date. Uh, and yeah, so Windows installer validation is a separate target from the core compile. And because it has no inputs and outputs, it always runs, which slows down the builds um, when they don't need to. So it's a matter of getting the inputs and outputs correct on the Windows installer validation target. So, oh, if only we had someone who was well versed in MS Build. Yeah, I mean, I expect I'm going to end up getting this one because I've done all the compile targets thus far. But I want to give someone else the opportunity to jump in if they want. But probably nobody will by the time I get done the patching. So I'll probably be picking up this one <laughs> and the other issue that I opened in um, the targets, which is not this one, but coming. Oh, not coming. All right. Um, Build exception when bundle has software tag, but the chained MSI does not. So bundles will try to read the software tag information out of an MSI, and they were doing so without care and blowing up when the MSI did not have one. I found this when I was creating our uh, uh, bundle for Wix 4, and I fixed this on my stream yesterday. So we can put this in four. I already took it because it was a bug. I need to do something on the stream in that space because I didn't want to spend a whole hour doing documentation. <laughs> so I did a half hour on this one. So this has been fixed. So I think you can 
uh, put this in four and preview one, and it will be fixed there. You can have a bundle that refers to MSI, a bundle that has a software tag to an MSI that does not. That was, those are easy. Um, burn retries bad MSI uh, installation folder four times before giving up, uh, which is six, eight, five, six. Um, so if you have a, a bad path or whatever, you will get prompted four times, even if you hit the cancel button on the dialogues uh, to cancel the retry logic. And I was saying that that doesn't seem ideal. Where retry does a retry very quickly and comes back. Well, that's not burn. Fine. Those messages are MSI. Right. So, so, that's so the bundle, beating. the bundle retries a bad MSI installation. If so, yeah, probably with standard, right? With standard BA. That's all the ball retry logic. Yeah, but it's not being canceled when you hit the cancel button. Yeah, but the cancel is to MSI. And then the, the cancel from MSI, it's just resulting in an installation failure. It's not, the error from MSI was not user canceled. Okay. So I'm not. So the user has to press cancel four times to get out. When I mean, ideally I one would have done it. Yeah, but hitting a cancel on a random MSI message doesn't necessarily mean you, should, you want to cancel everything. Really? I mean. I, I, I don't know. I, 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 you could go that way. It's also kind of weird. It's like hit cancel, cancel, cancel four times. Like, really? You keep telling me the same thing. I mean, I understand what you're saying. I just don't, I don't know how we're going to fix this because MSI is telling us that the install failed due to our network location failure. And the bow retry logic is saying that we should retry it. Okay. So, I'm curious why the cancel message isn't resulting in, you know, a 1602. I mean, basically, I checked it, and it's work like this in V3, too, so. Okay. No one's <laughs> come up with it before, which is kind of weird. Yeah, a little bit. So we're saying we don't want the bug. I mean, we can say we don't care about the bug and move on. I don't have a strong opinion on it. It's just, I went through the experience. I was like, this is really strange. I had to hit cancel four times to get out of this when I would have thought cancel would have got me out right away. Well, it would have, except that we retry on failure. Yeah, but I hit cancel, so I expected it to not keep retrying because I didn't hit retry. <laughs> I, that's the, that's the, that's the user experience, right? I, I wasn't, I wasn't inside the code trying to design it's like we could say yeah you know we're just going to live with this behavior and that's fine then at least it's out here and people can be like oh yeah that's why that happens i just i don't think wix standard ba can assume that hitting cancel on any msi message means they want to cancel everything i don't think we can make that assumption if the user says i, I go back to i think bob's comment of the if if the MSI canceled, then I would expect that meant the user said cancel everything. Well, and that's my confusion. I don't know right. why, and and <clears throat> someone didn't provide logs. Um, did I not? I thought I did log. Provided the bundle log. Oh, we need the MSI log. Yeah. I, Sorry. I'm cancel there should have should have should have triggered a user cancel. For the whole MSI, I may be able and to then find MSI log on my the machine. ball retry logic would not kick in. Let me see if I can. So I'm, I'm, I'm curious about that. Uh, 
I can try to get the MSI log. I may still have it in my temp folder. <laughs> yeah. A quick search may give me back that timestamp. Yeah, that's fine. But I, I'm hoping we'll find one file. Hey, I found the file. Awesome. Very good. And and can you attach it? Yeah. The the putting it in line makes it really hard to scroll. Although I they do thankfully provide a the one. copy button. That was nice of them. I want to make sure I'm grabbing the right one here. Yeah. Anyway, I think I, I can get this log file attached to that. Not here, but okay. I can. Um, on the assumption that you do that, I will take a look. Let's see if I put it over here. Yeah. All right. Let's see. I th All right. I just need to make sure I have the timestamp right before I put the wrong log up there. It is one of the theme viewer logs. Just have to make sure it's the right one. All right. Cool. Add the MSI log to that. I should have had the MSI log. All oh, right, moving on. Wix PDB output customization folder has no effect in a Wix proj. Yeah, this is gonna be not fun to fix because it's, yeah, the way PDBs get output and all that other kind of stuff. I'll take this one because nobody else is gonna get this one. This is, this all kinds of things are entwined to prevent this from working. The, sorry, the Wix PDB output folder customization has no effect in a Wix proj, 6857. Uh, you can customize the PDB output there in Wix targets, and that is currently ignored. And the PDB is always placed next to the MSI in the end. And it's not supposed to do that. And so it's... You can do it with like a C-sharp project. And you and it does work with C-sharp project okay. and BCX projects and everybody else. I don't know if it's called PDB output there, but that was what it was called in three. So whatever, but there is a folder that you can specify or a okay. property you can specify the folder for PDBs to go to. And it's not, yeah, that's very I care unfortunate. I a lot about this issue to be clear, but. Yeah, well. If it's trivial, okay, otherwise. I don't... Yeah, we'll, we'll see the, it's interesting it hits us because we actually redirect all our PDBs to a separate folder so we can zip them up. Right, right. And the only PDBs that aren't there now are the Wix ones. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh, yeah, okay. that's too bad. So it, that's kind of unfortunate. Um, six eight five eight update Wix standard B, Wix standard BA themes. Wow. Uh, to use install folder instead of install folder. That's install folder in all caps versus install folder in Pascal caps. Sean. Yeah, I think I pretty laid it out in the issue. Like we. I made a change so that uh, when you set a variable as bal overridable to yes, then that means you can put it on any case on the command line, like you can for MSI, and it'll set the right variable. But that requires that the variable was declared in all caps, like MSI, that you have to do that for it to be public. So when we created the themes in v3, the default variable for install folder was created in Pascal case instead of all uppercase. So now this is kind of conflicting with this feature to where we set the default to all uppercase so that if you set a variable as hidden, it won't get written to the log. So we probably need to change it to all caps even though that's a breaking change and might be confusing for some people that they try to directly take their theme. So I'm, I'm confused on this change. Uh, are you saying that a Pascal case variable is now hidden by default? If you, if you try to set install folder as bow overridable, yes, then the build will fail because the bow extension is not letting you set bow overridable yes on a, on a variable that's not all uppercase. The, the bundle setting was command line variables are all uppercase. Does that make sense? Um, 
kind of, but it's it's also kind of a regression um, because you know, MSI didn't let you specify variables as hidden or not other than by case, but burn did, which, you know, perhaps was confusing for people who confuse variables and properties, which is completely understandable. But with with this approach, then you can't have uh, you can't have yeah, okay, but I I'm guessing this was to solve the problem of case insensitivity for command line. Yeah, I mean, you can, there's a setting you can change to go back to v3 behavior of case sensitive. But then you miss the command line when it logs the command line and it's case sensitive and they typed in the wrong case. It's right, going to get right. logged in plain text. Yeah. Just what people were complaining about. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's a bummer because I really hate all the all caps property names. Um, but that makes sense, I guess. Well, I mean, I guess Burn could change it to where you, you could make it to where there's a, like it deduplicates the variables. Like it doesn't allow you to have multiple variables with the same name but different case. Um, yeah, okay, so so basically I I think we should, you know, not be we should be more like basic. Um Variable names shouldn't be case sensitive, um, or we should be more like NTFS, um, you know, case retaining but not case sensitive. Um, but I th the command line does really kind of mess that up. Um, I'm just in my head. I'm trying to, you know, weigh the. The disadvantage, I mean, I, I, you know, the problem is if you miss the case of a password variable, it's going to get logged. Then that's bad. Well, it's only the ones that come from command lines that have to essentially match any casing on the command line to the correct case inside burn. So it's only the ones that are ball overridable in this case, right, that have to be unique case insensitive, right? Because you could, because all the other variables are internal, they don't have this problem. They don't have to worry about being set from the command line where people, you know, will fat finger the inputs without being, you know, developers, right? It's just the command line ones we have that are interesting in this case. I guess that's kind of true, but like if, I don't know, if someone tries to look at the log and they see variable and, and they don't know whether it's overridable or not. And then, or if they have a custom BA, they might not be using overridable to determine which ones they're going to allow to be set on the command line. Right, they'd have to re-implement that logic. I mean, as, as far as the burn engine is concerned, it doesn't matter whether it's overridable or not on the command line. It's just whether it's hidden or not, right. whether it needs to be masked. But if we're trying to keep the feature where the engine doesn't, where it does mask the hidden variables when it logs the command line, then the core tool set needs to be able to make sure that you can't have multiple variables with the same case or same name but different case because the engine needs to be able to find the right variable that you want to set from the command line. 
because if one's hidden and one's not. But not any I variable can be set from the command line. Not typing it on the command line doesn't mean it will be set, but that doesn't mean that they can't type it on the command line even if it's not going to do anything. If that makes sense. Like they can still type in a hidden variable in the command line even if something caused it to not actually take effect and get set. Well, hidden just controls how Burn does logging, right? So I'm not sure we can just... I, I think we conflated a couple things. There's variables that can come in from the command line, and and the reason we care about them is because we want to allow them to be in any case. It's really, it's it's the variables from the command line, any case so that users get an easier experience. And then we have the, and so there's that set of variables, which is not all variables inside a, a bundle and should not be all variables inside a bundle. And then there's also then, we can mark, then there's all the attributes on the bundles after that hidden and all that kind of stuff. And it does make sense to apply any variable that is can be set from the command line and is hidden does make sense that we should not then log that when it comes to the command line. So I, those are the two things. And it sounds like all caps has been used to make things available on the command line. Is that what I'm, is that, was that the change to make them public? Public variables well, should be uppercase. Oh no, it's all uh, the extensions that are doing that. The engine has no idea which variables can be set on the command line. Right, That's that was something we added to, to Wix standard BA. But the burn engine does need to know which variables are. So it's assuming that if it's in the format, you know, string equals string, the first part is a variable. And then it's trying to hide the second part if it's hidden. That was a feature I added a long time ago. But the engine doesn't know whether that's actually uh, going to do anything. OK, so the engine says, I found a variable. I found a pattern on the command line that looks like a hidden variable. Therefore, I hit it from your command line in the abundance of caution. Right. So what if all overridable variables have to be uh, unique case insensitive? Yeah, the problem is it can't be overridable because that's only ball extension. This is a burn behavior now. Hmm? What? The I thing we just said is a burn behavior. Not a hiding the logging of the command line, masking the variable value from the command line as a burn engine feature. Right. What I'm saying is, if something is hidden and overridable, so mixing engine and BA concepts. Okay. Yeah, that's the challenge, but all right. Then all of the variables must be unique regardless of case. Yeah, the burn engine needs, if if we want the burn engine to be Kate's insensitive matching for the variable name. No, no, I was thinking this is a BA thing. The, the... We, we need the case insensitivity in the burn engine when it's trying to map the variable name to whether it's hidden or not. I think... There's no way today to get all variables? Well, you can, you can go through all the variables in that that's available, but if there's multiple variables that only are different in case, one is hidden, one's not, which one do you pick? I, I think the, the hidden one. Um, I, I think it might be easier if we did this where 
but like don't do the all caps thing just go for the feature to hide variables from the command line it following the path of abundance caution just say burn saw a matching pattern with the the key equals value so it took that key did a case insensitive compare against all the variables found one that was hidden therefore we didn't log that ver value that's the abundance of caution. It's technically leaking a little bit of information that, hey, there's this hidden variable inside burn that maybe you could try to set. But I don't know that that really tells the attacker if there's an attacker anything. So that would be the easiest thing to do without any changes. There wouldn't have to be case sensitive, case insensitive. It'd just be like, look, we're being nice to you. We're going to do a case insensitive compare from the command line. And if it happens to match any variable inside here that's marked hidden, then we're going to ignore this out of the uh, log line. And maybe it will catch some things that it shouldn't, but it certainly will catch the things that it should have. That's, that has no changes, no real complications from anything in V3, uh, from V3 to V4. It doesn't introduce all caps behavior like MSI that people complain about. And uh, bootstrap applications don't have to care either. They can still operate however they want to operate on the command line. It's just hiding anything that happened to match from the command line in an abundance of caution. That avoids lots of work. Unless there's a case so, I'm missing. So we're talking about changing the command line variable setting to the bow extension. And out of the engine. No, I I don't know that. I don't know all the values of the command line variables settings. It's just case sensitive and uppercase today. And and what is that? Does it burn case sensitive is v three, uppercase is MSI. But. Ooh. Why so does there's it? Two, there's have two to parts matter. of this, right? The engine needs to mask it when logging, and the other part is that the variable actually needs to get set. But you said burn doesn't do that. That the BAs do that. At least that's what I thought I heard. That's true, but we still need a case sensitivity setting Why? because some people want. No matter that, which case they pick, they want the uppercase one to be set. Well, they want the one to be set. So uh, this that particular feature uh, was actually one I argued against. Yeah, it came from the Windows SDK team, as I recall. They wanted to be able to specify, you know, name value pairs on the command line, and they wanted them to be case insensitive. When we first did the feature, it was case sensitive, so you had to match the case of the variable in the bundle authoring. And That's how it still works today. Until I added this extra setting. Oh. But burn doesn't set. Who uses the insensitive lookup? Or were you saying that burn would set those variables, not the BA? And the BA has to set them. There's no there's no burn concept for processing the command line. Yeah, so the only difference I added here was the like the default change to the uppercase to match MSI behavior. So sorry, are you saying right now by default the only variables you can set from the command line must be uppercase? And they have to have BAL overridable if you're using Wixner to BA. Okay, sure, sure. Well, sorry, I, let me back. Uh, let me clarify. The, the a a custom BA. Well, okay, no. So now I'm confused. Um, what if you're not using Wix standard BA? I mean, a custom BA today would you know, have to manually parse the command line. Right. And and then it just calls, you know, set the right right variant of set variable. 
so how I'm confused I'm confused at how this is a bundle attribute. Because when the burn engine is trying to decide what's a log, if it right now it's doing case insensitive matching by if the setting of command line variables is to uppercase, then it'll always uppercase that key that it parsed out before trying to find the variable to find whether it's hidden or not. Yeah, this is the case where Bob's idea of, or reference to NTFS makes a lot of sense. It's like, yeah, don't change the input, keep the input the same and do a case insensitive lookup. Yeah, do a case insensitive lookup and you don't have to uppercase it. You don't modify any of the user input because burn doesn't operate in the variables or anything. It's like, look, here's what all the stuff you got. I validated that none of these things that look like that might be name value pairs. I did a case insensitive thing and I was really careful and I went and checked if any of them were hidden. You're welcome. And then it doesn't get into the whole case insensitive, whatever. It's like, I don't know. This was your command line. Have a nice day. So I, I understand that part, but if I take out the command line variable setting altogether, then I need to reopen the issue that I closed because some people want it to where if they type in install folder with crazy casing, they want it to set the right, they want Wix standard BA to set the variable that they authored, even though the case didn't match. Sure, that's a Wix standard BA feature, right? Or a, a ball feature, maybe. Yeah, so that's what I meant by you're asking me to move it from the bundle command line variables into the ball extension. From the bundle command line, from the burn engine functionality to ball util. Okay, yeah, I guess that, yeah, that makes more sense. But that's where it's all How at does today. The command line variables change the engine today. It forces all the variables on the command line to uppercase? No, it's it's just trying to help the engine figure out whether the variable is hidden or not. So but the, the, it's whether sorry, it that, that, uppercase is the key or not what, before it goes through all the variables and tries to find the variable. When who? See, I, so I'm confused still about why is this an engine thing? Because it's, it's the engine that's logging the command line. Right, but uh, I oh, wouldn't, I, I see, I see. You're talking about the the initial dump of the command line, not the the variables. The there's a separate message when variable values are changed. You're talking about the initial dump of the command line. Yes. Right. Okay. All right. Okay. I just wouldn't put these two things together in one feature like that. Yeah, I'd be like, I get the whole protect the command line. That makes sense. Do that with case insensitive keys. And then burn doesn't have to do anything else with the command line. Like, it, there's no settings for that. It's just, it always does that because that's the safest thing to do. Yeah, yeah except it's not because it assumes the Wix standard BA approach of string equals string. Yeah, that's true. It does. It assumes that, which is also MSI behavior and all that. It, we don't have, we could implement how many different ways of setting variables on the command line for all the well, different ways that BAs do it. Ar arbitrary. I mean, they're, it's arbitrary. Yeah, it, it's all right. The convention was set by MSI. We're carrying forward that convention. You're right. I mean, you could do with a, you could go stream and say, if any regex matches this, then throw those things away. I mean, and have the burn engine run that. Uh, that's like, <laughs> it's like yes, I want to, I want to, I want to bloat the burn engine right. to add a, okay. I, to add regex support. And, right. I purposely and, picked regex. That <laughs> <laughs> that's why I picked regex. Right. So it's, it's, it makes sense that there are problems when people, when, because we logged the command line. I mean, the, the alternative is to not log the command line. The problem is that's really useful. Yeah. So, <laughs> so I, I get the, but I put a password on there on the command line because that was what I had to do to pass a variable with a password. I'd like you to hide that. 
And then it didn't when you didn't get the case right. I'm like, okay, fine, I can see that. Let's do that hiding of variables, case insensitive, because humans make mistakes and we'll just do the, and that'll just hide it. It's like, there you go. That made life a little bit easier, made log files a little less dangerous to chip around when you're making mistakes. Right, 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 right. Yeah. Because that's it, what it, it is in the end. They're gonna be like, why didn't it work? And if they're case insensitive somewhere else, we're like, oh, well, that's the whole problem. We see it now. There's the variable name that you used, and there's the stars. We didn't care about the password part. We saw that you got this wrong, or or whatever, right? It the data is still preserved without then changing, without adding the whole burn now gets involved in the interpretation of the command line past that. I, I was trying to separate those, so burn did right, right, the right. narrow thing, and then there's the other feature, which is the case insensitive matching from the command line, which you could say, yes, if you mark ball overridable, it will also do case insensitive assignment to variables. Yeah, okay, I can see that fit, that feature request as well. Totally makes sense, could definitely be implemented. I don't think burn should be modifying the command line variables to get it. Burn, I, get, I mean, that's kind of where I was at because it avoids all these problems especially a migration challenge and things like that. So anyway, that's, it seems like the straightest road to navigate there. Yeah, I can do that. And it, and it also doesn't propagate the capital letters as prop as public properties, which people don't like in MSI anyway, although it's a convention that if we were to pick one, it's a one, but Anyway. I think people got used to it and they were surprised when burn didn't work that way. So yeah, I'll do this in four. Cool. All right. Install for software tag table should be prefixed. Da, 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 da. Bob. Uh, this is actually Sean's book. I just opened it. Oh. <laughs> Okay, well, one of you. Um, so we, we have this weird mix, right? We have purely custom tables found in the extensions. Um, on the opposite end, we have the SWID tag table, which is generated by the core tool set. Um, in the middle, kind of, we have dependencies, which has a custom table generated by an extension. Um, the the custom table custom tables from the extensions, including dependency extension, have the Wix for prefix um, as a hedge against. Well, there are two things. One is a hedge against people using merge modules created with Wix 3, merging them into a, an MSI package built with Wix 4, <clears throat> we don't want tables to collide. Um, and if they're using a merge module, everything else has something to uniquify it, like the merge module modularization good. Um, the second thing is this also protects us from the same thing moving forward um, as we need to change table schemas um, in, you know, Wix 4 and beyond. Um, we can use that prefix to make them unique and protect against uh, any schema changes. So, therefore, it seems probably we should version the the one custom, well, I think it's the only custom table created by the core tool set for SWID tags. Yeah, I mean, it's a table that got moved in from. Right, right. It used to be in an extension. Yeah, it used to be an extension, and it got brought in. And it exists to essentially hold the salient information that's in the SWID tag as a table sure. queryable inside the MSI. Just like every other custom table. Um, yeah, the difference is that 
not every custom table is queried like by burn or by the bundle build to get yeah. the data out of it. So that's the tricky part about changing this. If we change it, then we have the burn code has to go look through all the different, looking for all the different tables. Well, it's not burn, right? It's just... It's I mean, the bundle, not burn, the, the burn build, right? Yeah, okay. Well, it's already doing that for the dependency tables. Oh, yeah. That's, yeah, that's the exact same, you know, approach. Yeah, it, the, when I created the software identification tag, it was more kind of a public table. It was a, this is the table. It's not like anybody else is going to implement it, but that was the idea of it. So we could put Wix4, we're basically saying, hey, we're pulling this back. It's not a public table now. It's a Wix4 table. Uh, well, so the primary reason I agreed with Sean's comment in your stream yesterday was that SWID tags have changed and actually quite dramatically. Um, so I think it makes sense to version the table, the table name somehow. Um, if, if we were to version them based on the, the radical change of SWID tags, then we should change them on the SWID tag version, not on the Wix version. Because uh, there's been two revisions sure. of SWID tag, but the first revision was essentially buried. And that's yeah, why yeah. we just, we didn't bother creating a backwards compatibility. We're just like, ah, we're going to sweep that all under the rug and here's a new one. Have a nice day. Yep. Yep. Which was a bump in the road, but it's not like these things took off um, in any major way. So sad, but true. Yeah, I, I hit across this something, and it's just the strange world. I don't know what people are doing in this world. Uh, it's one of those. There are so many standards to pick from. There's at least three. Like I don't know which well, people. And, and there's now a lot of work in the bomb space. Yeah. That I think overlaps or. Yes, it does. Over. It, no, it, yes. <laughs> some take over, some reference this. Yeah. Uh, it's a mess. So anyway, I don't, I don't have strong opinions. The intent was that this was a table that didn't change and certainly wasn't version to Wix. So that's why I was like putting Wix 4 on. It didn't make sense to me initially because it's not a Wix 4 feature. Sure, it's sure. Squid tag. Well, to be clear, you know, I, we, we picked Wix 4 um, because it was convenient, but the truth is it's easy to picture there being, you know, a Wix 8 prefix for a, an extension that, you know, revises more quickly than the core tool set. It's, it's just to make it unique yeah. across versions of essentially the custom action code that reads from the tables. Yeah, that's an idea of if we ever decouple the custom actions, major changes from the core tool set which is no. definitely a thing we've discussed and we basically punted on saying we're not there yet. But we're really, really close. Uh, um, yeah, it's probably something we'll be talking about in Wix 5 when we finally have something stable in Wix 4. You're probably right. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm mostly talking about functionality. You know, it, it would be possible to revise, uh, I don't know, the IAS custom actions uh, significantly based on, regardless of the version, sorry, we could, we could dramatically revise the IAS custom actions all on Wix 4. So it, it, they're really not, they don't have to be tied. Right. Likewise with SWID tags, you know, say that there's a 2023 revision that again, you know, makes dramatic changes to the data required. So um, so given that, I'm fine if we don't take a prefix. Um, I would add a suffix, maybe. But we could also just say, OK, if, if there is a future revision to the spec, then you know it could be the software identification tag 2023 table, or whatever the version. Yeah, whatever they did. Is. Yeah. I would be fine with that change if you don't want to mess with it today. Well, it's not messing with it. I just, I wasn't sure if this should be tagged Wix 4. No, no, I, 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 they just need to be unique. That was my only, that's the only goal. They need to be unique. Uniqueable. So if we don't do Wix 4, you want to make it separate from Wix 3. Well, it, it's, 
no, uh, to be, like I said, it's it's the Wix three to to four, yes, because we've run into that. That's already shown to be a problem. Um, I'm trying to forward think and say, because we can revise the extensions still based on on you know a common version of the core tool set, um, we need to make sure that the same problem from three to four, which is to be clear, all about merge modules, and I really have trouble caring. Yeah, about and these that. these but, don't go in merge modules because um, the tag had can't no go the, in merge modules? no the tag had to be underneath the product element. Oh, okay, then let's close it. Yeah, uh, these these things if are. It, if it comes up, then then you know, if it comes up, we can we can change it. But yeah, this doesn't have the problem that the other custom actions do. Because it lives underneath, because it because of how special it is tied to the parent element of bundle or product package. Right. Well, there, there's still the we we would still have to handle it for packages in a bundle. Right. So again, if there were a future revision of the SWID tag spec that yes. made that required a, a table schema change, yes, that new version should probably get a different table name. Yes, I, I I agree with that. If the table okay. format changed, yes. Okay. I agree with that. So given that that doesn't seem very likely, I'm fine with leaving leaving it software identification tag and dealing with compat should the issue come up in the distant future. Yeah. Okay. Ooh, all right. That's 10. I think we're through here. Yes. All right. That's that. We're down to the ones. Bob gets to remove triage from his issue as he goes off into it. And I'm sure I just caught it where he hasn't yet hit the save button. There it is. It's gone. All right. Oh, 1040. I kind of wondered how far we would get today, given how many issues there are. Let's see. What can we get here? Looking at the open Wix 4 issues, we left off, I think we agreed with the slipstream. And let's just let's just go through this page. I think we'll call it a day. All right. I think that's that's the thing. We have one. I have on this page. I have one, two, three, four, five, six. Let's try to get through six of these uh, of Wix four issues. And remember, on this, we're just saying: Are these still being solved inside Wix four, or are we punting them, or otherwise has it changed? So, on that note, uh, six, three, five, three. Bob, which is burn update detection should supply hashes if present in the update feed. Seems like a good thing, especially since I was just hitting this. Um, uh, yeah, I, I won't, I won't reject it outright. Okay, still moving there. All right, uh, whip, use MSI as source of files during patch build. Yes, this is a thing I am trying to do when I do patching, which starts as early as tomorrow, as late as Monday, I think. All right, um, whip, improve patch filtering. Another patch issue that I am tackling with all the patch things. I have four or five or six issues like this. And yes, I hope they all fall when I'm done patching. At least that's the idea. Uh, core integration, uh, 6433, core integration test host intermittently crashes when calling set External UI handler. Uh, oh, it's not assigned to anybody. Uh, external UI valid. Oh, this is validation, so it's probably not happening as much. Yeah. Um, but we run validation as part of the build. So I think this was fixed already. Oh, okay. Cool. Then go ahead and close that. All right. Switches that take arguments should report bad arguments, not switches. That's 6468. I am working on that right now, and I hope I finish cleaning up the switches and all the help and all that, the big sweep. This was one of the two issues that I was tracking to do that, and I hope to uh, um, have that done before I switch to patching. In fact, this is the last thing I was doing before patching, so uh, that's that. Yes, we're taking it. All right. 6503, core integration test host crash with access violation during MSI database import. 
signed to me with some crash, I think when importing IDTs, is this the IDT import one? Yeah, this is when importing IDTs. Um, I've never seen this happen and I'm still unclear where I'm to get this, how to hunt this down. So are you still seeing this occasionally, Sean? I haven't seen it in a while. Hmm. Hmm. Wow. We'll keep it open. It'll probably be one of the last ones we close in the, well, we haven't seen it forever, so we don't know that it happens, but an intermittent crash. I don't know what to do with that. <laughs> it doesn't happen regularly. And I already looked at it, like, at least in the validation, I saw ways that I could, that things could be getting crashed. I don't, this one, it's really straightforward. Calling an MSI API, passing a string in, should just work. All right, so that's 6503. That's where we left off. Looking a little bit ahead, if these hasn't changed, I don't think. Uh, there's 45 open. That means there are 20 here, which is where we will pick up for uh, the next week. Unless, yeah, let's just do that. It's 1045. All right, cool. So that will leave us 20 of these. Hopefully we'll have fewer issues to talk about next week. I certainly won't be generating any because I'm just going to be buried in the depths of patching for three weeks to six months or something like that. Something like that. All right. Going back, 1045, anything anybody else has going on? Questions, comments, things to discuss. Um, clearly, we're making progress in Wix 4. Find a uh, range of issues and just trying to use it when creating a, a bundle for the Wix tool set. So we had at least one bundle being built <laughs> uh, with the intent of actually shipping it in Wix 4. Uh, and bigger issues are falling. For example, since the last meeting, I finished cap spanning, which was uh, one of the larger things I was worried about completing. And uh, I, it's done. It's like, yay, on to the next thing. Uh, there are plenty more bugs to find, I'm sure, that we don't know about. But we're trying to get through all of these, patching being the next big feature that I know. And then a series of bugs like we've seen here. And then preview one on our way to RTM where preview one is it. We'll take feedback from the community, fix any more issues that come in, and then eventually draw a line that says, hey, we are done with Wix 4, which will be a glorious, glorious day. But between there and, or between here and there, there and here, I guess that works either way, um, I have to go fix patching, which I'm not at all excited about. Don't at all want to be doing that, but that's what I'm gonna do. All right, I filled a lot of space. If Zach, Jacob, or anybody else is in the chat, say hi. Uh, had any other questions? Um, that was the time to do it, I think. All right, I need to look ahead. August 25th, I'm pretty confident. <laughs> Although I was last time, let's look at August 25th. Yeah, August 25th is open. There's a soccer tournament after that, but not on the Thursday. So we'll be back in two weeks, same place, same time. And we'll essentially do exactly this, but hopefully less on the issues and more on the Wix 4 triage so that we get through all the remaining 20 issues that say, yes, we are doing these or that we're not. Um, and we will go from there. So two weeks from now, until then, all you guys take it easy. Talk to you later. Bye.